right. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> so sorry. I was running a bit late this morning. So good morning, y'all. I'm so glad you are here. And then we're back in our in our home here where I usually am because I've been out the last like week and a half or so. So it's good. Good to be back and good to see all of you. Good morning, Nat Eye, Cookie Toots, Can Kenta, Tori, B-Level. Hi. Good morning. Dorothy, Jennifer, Larry. Oh my goodness. So many. Asima. Sorry. Catherine from New Mexico. Good morning. Kristen. Shogun, good morning, everyone. And again, I'm so glad you guys are here. Obviously, it's been an interesting week with part two of Harry and Meghan's reality TV show. I will say, like I said in my video, if you haven't seen it yesterday, is that at least it was not as boring as the initial one. Sorry, I'm going to change up my light here for a second. Okay. Uh, it, it, was it was less boring. Not still not like huge, huge bombshells, but it was definitely, definitely sad uh, to see Harry and Megan just still take it to the family so, so much. It's really sad. Oh, thank you so much, Michelle, for the super sticker. Okay. And Lone asked, Lone Brigitte asks, um, let me, oh, I thought I clicked on it. There we go. Uh, have you seen the message I sent you from Instagram uh, from Denmark? I have not seen that. Sorry. The dogs are here. I have not seen that yet, but I will be on the lookout for it. Uh, sometimes it's difficult to go through all the DMs anymore. Sometimes I, I, I go through and um, try to get through them on the Instagram. Miss Pippa. And Miss Pippa is here, guys, if you guys don't know. Miss Pippa broke her elbow a couple weeks ago, and she's doing a lot better. She's doing a lot better. So um, she has been, she was boarded for a bit, and she stayed with my sister, so she is back on puppy patrol like we call it for the most part okay so uh just if so if you guys have any questions comments anything about the the reality tv show the christmas concert that catherine did or the uh, obviously the we got the news that the invitation to the coronation has been given out to harry and megan i do have a video i filmed about that so i'll be working on editing that today probably for tomorrow I maybe should get that up today, but maybe it'll be tomorrow because I have to do some Christmas shopping today. I'm really behind on that. And so that that will be interesting, too. And so we will see what new kind of information. Um, no, I've lost my train of thought. Um, but we will we will see new things. But yeah, if you guys have any questions, comments or anything. So sorry, um, put them in all caps. It's been a while since I've had the dogs around. I forgot how sometimes distracting and demanding they can be because they want something. Uh, so let's get started. Okay. And I just saw this one and let me see if I can find it again. Just somebody said that <laughs> asthma says we want all the money back from the wedding. I think you guys, you in the UK, you guys deserve it. It is they again, I feel like after watching the whole thing and how much they've recorded and everything the whole time, seemingly, I, I think this was always a plan in one way or another. Megan was always either going to sell the pictures of her and Harry post dating or as they were done um, with the relationship, they were going to sell them in some way at some, she was going to sell them in some way at some point. Uh, he, she just happened to convince him to go along with it, which is so terribly sad. It's so obviously a way just, it's just a, a baseless, terrible money grab. And so it's like, what was the point of the wedding? You didn't really want to learn anything. What you got too from the reality TV show. And I think I'll do a whole video on this as well is that, well, she takes all the criticism she gets and defines it as hate. Now, some of it is hate, but a lot of it is like genuine criticism. I'm genuinely criticizing you for walking in front of your husband, spending way too much money. And part of it is because I'm a monarchist. I want the monarchy to survive. And so when she abuses the power she's given through the monarchy, it puts the whole system at risk. And that's that's very serious. That's very, very serious. Um, so I just feel like she doesn't acknowledge any of that <laughs> or her own fault in anything. So it's really hard to get behind somebody, I think, who acknowledges no fault whatsoever. She never did anything wrong. She tried her hardest. She was perfect at it. That's the impression that you get is that they were all jealous because she was too good at it. I'm like, well, no, <laughs> you walked in front of your husband and greeted the King of Morocco while on a diplomatic foreign tour. That's like a massive no-no on multiple different levels. <laughs> I feel like it's one thing in, in a 
situation where perhaps you really know the monarch, like some monarchies do, or you are, uh, I think that's maybe more okay in a place like New Zealand or Australia. But when you are greeting another royal, the blood royals always greet themselves first. The higher ranking greets themselves first. Then it's lower. I mean, this is just, this is just monarchy 101. I mean, it really, really is. All right. Jen Adams asks, <laughs> what are you going to do after the book comes? What are they going to do after the book comes out? They have nothing left to sell and no one is going to do business with them. That's my question. What's your plan now? And thank you so much for the tip as well, Jen. I, they just have nothing to sell. That's that's what's come out of all this too, is like there is nothing, they ha have nothing to sell. Like, I, I, I will be honest, like I could get behind you if you change your life, mind, whatever. I am, I'm totally for forgiveness. I feel like I've done that with famous people. Now I can't remember who they are, but, or like Catherine was not a fan of Catherine for the first five, six years of her marriage to William. She just didn't seem to do much. She didn't seem to have much personality. She was, she's a bit bland. I mean, she dressed well, but that was the extent of Catherine for a long time is she looks great and her hair looks great. <laughs> Sometimes I felt like that was all that was to Catherine, but she grew up, she changed. You could see her getting much more involved. She had her kids and then you could just really see her blossoming in her royal role. And it took her five or six years and she had spent 10 years around the royal family before that pretty much. So Megan expecting everything to happen overnight like that, well, pff, never, that was just so ridiculous. And I feel like that was part of her demise. But when it comes to the book, I mean, what else do they have to do? They, they've shown us Megan can't act. So she can't do that. They seemingly can't produce anything. It'll be interesting to see how the heart of Invictus or whatever goes off because they had the cameras there during the Invictus games, or maybe they're saving that for season two. Maybe in season two, they're finally going to show us them actually doing something beyond trashing their family. Uh, but that remains to be seen. So we will, we will see, but again, I just don't think they have much, but that's why I think they're going to go to the coronations because they have to go. They have nothing else. So they have to go. <laughs> Jenny, thank you so much for the super st sticker. LC. good morning, Brittany. Thanks for doing a live. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad you're enjoying it. And Lizzie asks, Netflix gave refunds to the advertisers. Yeah, that wouldn't be a surprise. And thank you so much for the tip as well. It, I mean, why would you want to advertise? It's so, so true. Uh, it's just really, really kind of crazy. All right. Going up here to some of the earlier comments, Canta says, um, you know, asking Tori, one of the other commenters, are you from the UK? I hope you don't mind asking. I'm from the UK and a firm believer in the monarchy. God save the king. And um, I think somebody else has said, unfortunately, people in the US are ignorant to the truth of the monarchy and the royal protocols. Acceptance of the Markle lies only shows America's, the United States has no desire to research and are led by sheep. I would agree with this. So I think when it comes to the monarchy, a lot of people are ignorant on how it works. And because some of the things Megan said, like, or Megan and Harry said, like Harry going, well, you know, William put the institution first. So I was like, well, yeah, duh. Like He has to put the institution first. It's his inheritance. Wow. That's how this works. You, you need to rule things both with your heart and your mind. Harry and Meghan just do everything by emotional reactions. Whereas, you know, William has to think of the future. He has to think of the country. He can't just think, of, oh, my feelings are hurt. So he has to think of a broader, a broader thing. And that's what all royals have to do is you have to think broader. Harry doing this whiny, what was me emotional thing is just not right. And you definitely could tell too throughout it that Meghan really thought they didn't really mention anything about the protocols, really. So they didn't mention that, you know, she probably should have worn a hat when she was with the queen, that she probably should have, you know, they, they didn't go in, like, the spending and everything. They didn't go into any of the protocols. And when it came to, like, the baby shower, Megan goes, well, my friends paid for that. I was like, honey, that doesn't matter. You just took your taxpayer-funded security from the UK to the United States for this. And you had to rope in my US taxpayer-funded security from the Diplomatic Security Corps, which is part of the State Department. And they are required to do this because you are an internationally protected person. They were required to also augment your security. So BS when you say, well, the taxpayers paid for none of it. It was like, yes, they did. They paid for the four or five guys that were following you around the whole time while you did paparazzi strolls. 
that that's what my taxpayer, you know, my taxpayer funds hard at work in New York City there. And granted, other royals come to the States, other people come here on vacations who are high ranking. That I don't mind. It was the flashiness of it. The seeming obvious grab for attention. That's what bothered me. It's like, you can have this fine, but having an upstate New York and that you're, and I think she probably did not tell her royal staff about this. I don't can't remember if this was covered in the Tom Bauer book. I haven't had a chance yet to read the Valentine Lowe book. But, you know, your diplomatic security office. Um, where was I going with that now? Now I'm all confused myself. But anyways, there, there were a ton of. Uh, no, So her staff would have told her, hey, don't do this. The optics are bad. I have no doubt the palace staff would have told her that. But she didn't want to have them roped in on this. So I think she had her own PR team who allegedly briefed the paparazzi about where she would be and what she was wearing and that they had the away suitcases and everything. So it was like just this huge marketing thing. And it's like you cannot do that as a royal. And she just, again, does not or refuse to understand the difference between celebrity and royalty. And she banks on the American audience also not understanding that. And that's what... Ugh, and we saw this again in the Oprah Winfrey interview, too, and just so many instances where she's very, very much doesn't um, just doesn't understand the differences or doesn't care to or doesn't under how or banks on the ignorance of the American audience, which is, I think, really sad. And you see a lot of people are going, yeah, I mean, I, I watched it and I feel for them. And I was like, I do, too. But one of the other things that gets me and I know this is weird is that. I understand that she felt fearful and I sympathize with her for that. That would be terrible to feel like you're in fear of your life. But what about the rest of the Royals? Do they not get death threats too? I'm sure they do. The actually only Royals who have had physical assaults on them or attempted ones recently are the queen and King Charles. King Charles has had eggs thrown at him. An actual assassin tried to climb the walls of Windsor castle last year in December and part of his reasoning was a, an issue related to history and race, which could have been instigated or influenced by Harry and Meghan's interview. So why are you telling me that you are so scared of your secure for your for your, your ugh, for your security and everything, which I totally a hundred percent understand, but yet refuse to acknowledge that other people had security concerns too. That you know if. if Assassin's going to go after anyone. They usually go after the people at the top, not the people at the middle or the bottom. And I just don't feel like, again, everything is so confused in her mind. And she is pretty good at making everybody who criticizes her look like a hater. And that's, that, those are different things, in my opinion. Jennifer asks, am I crazy or did Harry and Meghan pretty much say they could do a better job than William and Catherine? Oh, they 100% did. They 100% did. And... It was it was somewhat veiled what Harry said. And at the same time, too, you got to think Megan throughout the whole thing was like, I did everything. I did all I could. It was, you know, and she's talked, I think, no matter she, it was the first episode. Sorry, the first part. She mentioned that no matter how good I was, it was never enough. And I was like, but that was your definition of good. I'm sure the real family in a lot of respects would actually disagree with the idea that you were so good. So this notion that she has that she was, I think, perfect is a huge thing and that she did it better just because she had one successful tour. She's like, I'm the best ever. And it's like, well, you know, everybody comes out for those kind of things. Like a lot of people who are interested in Royals, a lot of people came out in Boston just to see the Royals. They would come out in Australia as where as well as in even more droves, you are the new commodity. There will be a natural interest, but what royals understand is that that interest will eventually decline and be replaced by somebody else, somebody younger. So Catherine and William at some point will be, their kids will become more popular or more covered by the papers than their parents. Once they become teenagers, young adults, they will start to dominate the headlines. That's just how this thing works. Same thing, you know, for the most part, if you're an actor, the young new thing comes up and whoops, you're, you're just not that interesting anymore. And if you are a good actor, a good actress, you can keep your popularity or your interest by doing great roles. Actually, it's kind of nice because the paparazzi interest and the press interest 
wanes to a certain extent, while you can actually focus on your actual work as an actor, if that's what you're really passionate about, you don't have to worry about as much of people digging through your private life because, you know, there's the young, hot thing over here doing X, Y, and Z. Instead, you can focus on your singing, your acting, your, your playwriting, your directing, whatever, that you can be basically, uh, I feel like you don't have to have the pressure of the press and everything. So, but yeah, Harry, Megan, Harry, Megan was perfect, guys. And so, so perfect that a pilot had to get down on his knees or a, a uh, flight attendant dude or whatever had to take his hat off, get on his knees in her first class seat and tell her, we so appreciate everything you did for your country, our country. And I will mention that quote too, because it seemed apparent to me that she really did think of Harry's country as Harry's country and not tried to adopt it as her own. I think that was pretty evident. Sorry. I did have a little bit of breakfast, so I'm going to have a bite here. Okay. So next question, Larry Harkle asked her left eye wet when she hurried her two hands up to wipe them with her hands. Who does that? Nobody is the answer. She can only cry out of her left eye. She said in a clip, you could definitely perhaps see that. So that would be, that was kind of yeah, I mean, again, I, I appreciate the fact that she was emotional, but also, too, I just don't totally buy it either. Some of it, at least. Oh, Mary, thank you so much for the super sticker. You are so kind. And then Lizzie, hello. Megan didn't Google him engagement interview. Also, Megan went to his private IG. I'm sorry, but the math ain't adding up. Yeah, I when I saw that, I, I mentioned in another video that I think Megan... She is an Instagram person. She wants to see the happy, smiley, gorgeous veneer of something and not look any deeper inside. So she wanted just the banal view of what somebody thinks of themselves rather than who they actually are. So again, none of it adds up to me. It, it never has added up. I feel like with Megan, I feel like it's all, uh, I feel like it's all, um, it's, it's all veneer, all crazy and everything. Hi. So Evelyn asked, will the Harkles attend the coronation or not? Another question to keep them in the headlines. So I think they, my thing has always been they have to attend the coronation because they have nothing else. <laughs> their, their Netflix thing was just kind of, I mean, it's just, it was kind of lame. It was, it wasn't really as interesting as I think they were, they were thinking they are. They're really not that interesting of people. And it was just a very one-sided wine fest. So if you were a bit on the fence on Harry and Meghan, I could see, and you don't pay attention much, I can see where you're like, oh, poor them. But other people are like, yeah, but it just doesn't, I think they have to. And, but it does make them look like hypocrites because they supposedly hate the institution, yet they'll happily go to the coronation. And again, it gives them something to sell to somebody. I don't know who that would be necessarily. And it will, um, Again, just one of those things where it's it's going to be, it'll be interesting to see. And I did mention on Twitter, I was like, I really hope that they, that she gets booed pretty good. I think that would be a good humbling for them. <laughs> and well, at least when Harry comes by for his book, if he comes and dares tour in the UK about it, I think he'll find himself on the receiving end of some really negative press. Because all the UK press establishment was really, really negative about the series. Oh, Debbie. Hmm. First time you're catching it live. Hello. Welcome from Chicago. Okay, we're going through here. <laughs> Why is it always on camera when they get the messages from famous people? I don't know. <laughs> that was kind of funny. Is like, it's Beyonce. <gasps> you know, because we're like supposed to be so impressed that Beyonce you know, cares. Cause she even herself was like, I can't believe Beyonce knows who I am. And I would get it. It would be pretty cool. If, you know, one of the Royals knew who I was and I, I would think it would be pretty cool, but also goes to show, I think that she is just very into fame and fortune and, and that's it. She's, I think at the heart of it, a very shallow person. She tries to wrap herself in this um, veneer of being a deep thinker on social issues and everything. And I just, I really don't think she is. I really don't think she is. So that's that's what I think. I was hoping Miss Pippa would come over here, but she hasn't yet. Because I wanted to show you guys. She has a new cast and it has chickens on it, which is funny. 
Uh, Jill says, so sad that Harry and Meghan have brought into the hierarchical protocols rather than being team players. Yes. So Harry and Meghan did not want to play on the team. They wanted to have their own wild. They wanted to be their own within the system. They wanted to be, they didn't want to play by the rules. They wanted to be rogues and everything. And I feel like that again was a, something that really damaged the monarchy because it's like, you have to be a team player as a monarchy, unless you're at the top, you are a team player. That's how this thing works. And that's across the board. You, if you're just not the main in line, you just don't have that much power. And I think Megan really thought, especially at one point that she could be queen of the Commonwealth. Or that she could have like this veneer of having this power over the Commonwealth because, you know, again, she put the Commonwealth flowers on her veil. And I remember just thinking, why? That doesn't even make, even when they said, I was like, that makes literally no sense to me because, well, you're, you're just, you're just the vice president of the Queen's Commonwealth Trust. And again, I, they put a lot of emphasis on the Commonwealth because she was going to be so good. She, she was going to be part of the Commonwealth and she was you know, most of the people in the Commonwealth have darker skin. So she'll, she'll matter to them and they they'll see themselves in her and everything. And I'm like, I mean, I, I get it. And at the same time, it's like, but that doesn't mean that you can ignore the rest of the family or do your own thing because you think you're so special. Although I do love the moment where Harry was like, we're so good. Won't they just want us for free? Cause we can do our own thing. We can make our own money and they can get us for free. <laughs> like, yeah, no, <laughs> that was really funny. Uh, good morning for fee. Uh, did you all see Megan holding a pitchfork and calling it a hoe? <laughs> I totally missed that. Uh, or that was a clever, um, clever gag. I think that was pretty good. Uh, so let's go to Asimov. Do you think Eugenie will face backlash from her family over her involvement in the docuseries? I mean, her, her involvement was so, so brief. I don't think she'll have any negative reaction to it. I think they knew she went to California and she could be the conduit of some communication or a bridge to keep the lines of communication somewhat open by having her and Harry still be close. And I think the family could be fine with that. Again, I think they want him back. They don't want her. They don't want her. I mean, what it came across abundantly clear is that the monarchy can't stand Meghan Markle. And they would prefer she be on a different continent the vast majority of the time. I think they would also prefer to be quiet. But if they could get her on an entirely separate continent, that would be fabulous. Uh, so that would be that would be funny. Um, all so lone brigitte said the royal children on tour in copenhagen that would be cool you sent me a dm so i'll have to look at that on instagram joan bell asked since january 2020 to prepare for their netflix show harry has lived with microphones and cameras 24 7 thought he didn't want to live in a fishbowl you would think you you would think that the guy doesn't i mean but it's all about the veneer of control it's like well we have control now so it's it's fine as long as we're in control and some of the things they were complaining about, it's like the paparazzi and everything and the drones flying over and the helicopters. And I get it. That's annoying. And that's frustrating, but you know what, how you, where you wouldn't have to deal with that. Why in the UK in the, one of the palace properties, you wouldn't have to deal with those kind of, kind of things you chose to leave. Ergo the consequences of living under the glare of the media spotlight in a different way without the protection of the palace. That's your issue. I don't have any sympathy for you. I really don't because that is the life you chose and that's what happens. So that was quite interesting. Uh, so Elizabeth says Megan's mask slipped when she blamed William for Jason Knapp. Can you imagine what she's like off camera? Oh my gosh. I can't imagine. I saw that and I was like, Ooh, the real Megan's coming out there. She was not happy. And I think she was really not happy because he proved that she was lying. And even though I loved her lawyer was still like, well, you know, he just proved what she said earlier. I was like, no, she said she had misplaced or that those emails and messages and everything were deleted. And he proved that, no, that's not the case. So yeah, she lied. <laughs> even though they, she said she lost them. She, I, I think she lied. Personally, I think she lied. I think she knew they were there and she just didn't want to deal with them. So it was just, it was just fascinating. She's like, but that's your brother. And it's like, well, yeah. And you're also having a court case about this again, cause and effect for Harry and Megan are complete utter mystery. They are like completely shocked when things not only don't go their way, but that the, that what's going on is like their action caused a reaction here. Megan was 
have this court case. And then she complained that the Daily Mail was using it to dig up more dirt on her. It's like, well, yeah, duh, that's what they were going to do. And, you know, she was frustrated by this. All I want is apology. And I was like, sure, you can get that. But honestly, you know, going down the litigious route ain't probably always going to work out best for you. Uh, that's my personal opinion on that matter. And again, it's just that thing where she, she was just so angry that they would, anybody would dare not go with the, the, the plan, the vision that she had. And of course the male would ask Jason, Hey, she said she lost these messages and emails. Do you have them? And Jason could go, well, yeah, yeah, I do. And that's on Megan. Sorry. I may have to sneeze. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Hi, Ver Verena. Verena, uh, CR, hi, finally made it to live. Hello from Germany. Hello. Guten Tag. Guten Tag, right? Okay. Miss Hippo, come here. Come here. Over here. Over this way. Um, And you ask, love your channel. You have hooked me on history again. Oh, yay. I love history. I love history. That's part of the reason why I love the royals. History, drama, fashion, and jewelry. It's awesome. Okay. Uh, you're asking, is Eugenie pregnant? I don't know, but she she did kind of look at, at the concert choir. I know she carries a little bit more weight uh, generally than some of the others. Beatrice has actually lost a decent amount of weight, which I need to do again because I've gotten bad. But uh, so Eugenie looks uh, definitely could be. I wouldn't necessarily be a surprise. <sighs> um, so I would think that would be absolutely uh, fabulous. And that would be so exciting. A little a little brother or sister for baby August would be awesome. And I would just love it if we could see. Um, we did finally get, there was a, I didn't post it because it it was a paparazzi shot. And sometimes I try to avoid this. But um, they finally got a picture of Beatrice's daughter, Sienna. So that was cool. I think the Sienna name is actually rather pretty. It's kind of had this, that old world feel, but is is a bit unique and interesting too. So I was, I thought that I was, that was super exciting. Um, so I'm really, I would be so excited. All right, Claudia. Hi, Brittany from Texas. So enjoy Royal Fashion videos in addition to the news. Thank you. I'm so sorry. I've gotten a little bit behind on that with everything with going on with Harry and Meghan. There's just a ton of things, but this, uh, today I plan on filming the, and editing what I have from Kate's trip in Boston. Then we have this week's fashion, last week's fashion. So I may try to actually do a couple of fashion videos to drop tomorrow. No guarantees. Cause again, got to go Christmas shopping. I don't know where all you all are on your <laughs> Christmas list, but I am behind. I am behind. So that is what I will be doing. Um, so Jacqueline asked, what did you think of Harry Megan's Christmas card? So it was weird. It was just weird. Let me see if I can maybe airdrop it over to um, and show you guys for those of you guys who maybe have missed it. Okay, so let's open it. Sorry, I have a bit of allergies. So sometimes I'm trying not to get too close to the mic. Okay, present, share file. Okay. Sure. Okay. So this is Harry and Megan's new Christmas card. So this is, it just is weird. Wishing you a joyful holiday season. I know that people do this to be inclusive and everything. I don't know, but I, I would say if you're, you know, a Christian, like they supposedly are, why don't you just say Merry Christmas? You're, you know, you represent to a certain extent, the church of England as a Royal, just say Merry Christmas. I know Royals say more and everything, but that's just me. Um, so it says, from our family to yours on behalf of our teams at the Archwell Foundation, Archwell Audio, and Archwell Productions, we wish you health, peace, which Megan made a huge fuss about in the documentary, and a very happy new year. Best wishes, Prince Harry and Megan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Of course, they have to say the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, as if we've forgotten that they are the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. It's just weirdly corporate. And Megan, I feel like, of course, is the focal point of the image. Harry, once again, is just a little bit of a, a background character within his own image. Of course he is. But it's like, do we really care to hear, like, well, who is even the Archwell team anymore? We've heard about several people who have left in the last couple of weeks. Like, who is on Archwell anymore? Besides perhaps Harry and Megan. And so it's like, 
why? And I mean, I will give them something that they didn't bring it, trot out the kids to kind of deflect from all the bad press they've been getting pretty much from most sides, I would say. Um, but it's still just, it's just weird and odd. And again, once again, just not that interesting. But I'll scroll down and see if you guys, oh man, lots of scrolling. Uh, any thoughts? Yeah, it's so odd. Uh, the Royal gossip column. I, I agree. It's odd. It's weird. Cause I was hoping for something. I mean, you don't have to trot out your kids, but it's weird. Cause it's like our family. It's like, well, you mean your Archwell family? Why don't you just say Archwell family? Because you have to mention productions, foundation, uh, audio or whatever. It's like, where is it coming from? I just don't really know. And so it's just, it's just weird. I feel like just a very weird look. Um, and just so again, odd. Okay. Uh, ma, uh, mama asks, does anyone else have blurred video? I don't know if it's my phone. I don't know either. Let me, let me know you guys. I I'm seeing myself fine. <laughs> I don't I know that doesn't help. So that's probably not that, that helpful, but, uh, Zoe asks, hi, thank you so much for the tip. Love these lives on Saturday morning. What do you think about Diana losing her security when divorced? She was extremely popular. So it was definitely a different time, but I will say that part of, she actually at some points did actually not want the Scotland Yard security. And the reason was, is because of the lie she had been told by Martin Bashir, she was convinced that the, the perhaps those, these Royal Protection Officers would be spying on her. So she was not that interested in having them, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> she was not that interested in, in having them or worried about having them. And again, it's this thing where, yes, she's this hugely popular figure, but She's divorcing her husband. Yes, there should be some transition time, but I think it's really hard to, as a government, support the idea of a woman who does not work for them at all having 24-hour security. That's a different, that's difficult. It's not like you're serving as a, a, a president or something. And, and what I mean by that is, I know some people get mad at, you know, presidents still having security, but presidents also make decisions that impact global politics. So they will always be a huge target compared to somebody like Diana. Uh, she obviously has a huge following in terms of the paparazzi, but in terms of making like decisions about nuclear energy or power or war or something like that, she's not making this level of decisions. So uh, I think it's sad that she was. Her, her taxpayer funded security, I think would have definitely a hundred percent protected her, but that she, she didn't, I think, I think it is sad that she didn't, she and him didn't, weren't able to, that she didn't have that or that she declined it. Cause I think that's really, it's quite sad. Uh, Mama Adder asks thoughts on how Megan's at home wardrobe and style change from rich jeans, boho to style dripping and designer duds and jewelry. Did she appropriate Chelsea kind of dropped coziness for ostentatiousness thoughts? Yes. So Megan definitely, I mean, sitting on a $1,600 uh, Hermes uh, blanket <laughs> waiting for her court case. I mean, she went from like, you know, her stuff was nice. It was high street. It wasn't insanely expensive to like just dripping in designer stuff and like pricey designer stuff stuff that you didn't need to spend that much money for. And it just, it's just, especially the Hermes blanket to me just exemplifies who she is. She's new money. She wants to be flashy because that Hermes blanket and her set of friends is, is, is I, a high class item. It's something that everybody will go, yeah, look at that. Look at that blanket. Oh yeah. You're, you're, you have the money now. And so I just found that kind of interesting. Um, but obviously Hermes is just not a, I, I mean, Hermes is a very, very expensive brand. I did go to the Hermes store cause there was one in Boston, just put my hand on the blanket. Didn't seem that interesting to me. Although I will say the, the red color that I saw was very pretty. I will say it was, it was very pretty. It's stylish. It's simple, but again, Megan's all new money, new flash, all those sorts of things. That's, that's her level. And she still a, wears ripped jeans, but she wears like $500 ripped jeans now. I think the jeans that she wore to the Invictus Games on the second day were like $500. They were insanely expensive. I'm like, 
just a pair of jeans. Now I'm all for, I like um, the, the jean brand mother, mother jeans. I like their jeans, uh, but I will always get those on sale. I've never paid full price because they're like over $200, but you can get like page jeans and stuff for like super cheap at Nordstrom Rack. Not, I mean, not super cheap. I think the pair I paid for were like $60, which I realize is still expensive, but they retail for over 200. So uh, I don't feel like I came out that bad. Um, but she definitely overflashed her wealth. And that was a huge issue for her as a royal too. Cause all of a sudden she's wearing Dior all the time. It's like, you don't really need to wear Dior. You'll be perfectly fine without it. So uh, I, I just think she really just enjoyed the flashiness and the money. She's very much into the money. Um, Elaine asked, do you think once Harry and Meghan's children actually start school, do you think the children will be bullied? Hope not, but I don't know. It's difficult to say. I could potentially see it, but I could also potentially not see it as well. And it all depends on, you know, what they experience. I'm just not sure if they would. I hope they're not just for their sakes, but I do think that Megan was already and Harry were already thinking of going to California because they didn't want him to have the Earl of Dumbarton title because they didn't want dumb in his name because that would have led to TZ because I will agree that American kids probably would not understand the the British title at all and make fun of him. Although I could see them being made fun of for not being made a prince and princess. Uh, I think that could be definitely a bit of teasing too. And they only have their parents to blame for that because their parents live in a separate country and everything. And uh, the royals all uh, do. It did, I'm sure, experience a bit of teasing, but you know, you have the the benefit of being of having the power when you're, you know, actually in the UK and you're, you know, your grandfather is king. That that does help. Asma asked, "Is ooh, sorry." Does Eugenie hate Catherine? I don't know. I did hear once that there was a bit of tension between the um, the York sisters and Catherine over the a, some sort of event that Catherine apparently didn't tell them was fancy dress. So I could see them there maybe being some tension as they were kind of growing up in the scene and everything. But I would say that's mostly done now. I, don't, I mean, I would guess that they're not like best friends or anything. We don't really see them as far as we know, hanging out and when they're not on royal duties. So for example, like we don't know, we have never seen or heard of Catherine and Beatrice going shopping together, Catherine and Eugenie going shopping together, different things like that. We don't see that. So I think definitely that could be, I don't think we'll, we'll ever see that much. So as far as we know, there, there may not be that close and, and that's fine, but I feel like, you know, Beatrice does respect the institution. I don't know how much about, you know, for Eugenie, but there is a lot of respect for the race, for the institution. Uh, question, did they mention the cousin who visited in the reality TV show? So they definitely did mention Eugenie. She did visit California and she was seen very, very briefly, but not much at all. She didn't really say anything to the camera except for maybe hi. And I would be interested to know if she knew they were filming for Netflix. I mean, I would imagine she had to know and that that little and because imagine she doesn't know that they're filming that day and that little video her and Harry took somehow ended up in the reality TV show. So it is kind of a little weird. And I also thought, I wondered, like, because they had all the royals and they had their pictures from Harry and Meghan's wedding and they shared them, I wondered, I was like, well, the royals, you didn't get their permission to do that. And that's a little rude, don't you think? Uh, question from Mostly Sky. Do you think Catherine's Christmas special will be available on the internet or royal channel sometimes? It would be great to watch it. So as I understand it, the answer right now is no. It will be shown on ITV and ITV only. And there may be some opportunities to see it online later. I tried to look and see if I could watch the whole thing from last year online. And I couldn't find anything, but I may have not been searching for the right thing. That's entirely possible as well. And so it may just not be something that is available to people. So we'll just have to see if it's some if we can watch it. It would be great if we could. It would be really awesome. But there's also a licensing issues and those sorts of things once you cross borders and everything, it just gets more complicated. And I really do think that this was a, you know, this is something for the UK in a lot of ways. I mean, I would love to see it, but it definitely is meant for a, a UK audience. And I think that's, that's fine. So Anna C asks, uh, was she, what was she crying about in that scene that showed her and Harry throwing his head back? 
So is, if this is a meditation scene, so it's a meditation. It's a guided meditation. It's it's so hokey, so hippy dippy, like new agey, which is which is Megan's speed. You know, she wears. Sorry for any of anybody who's in that. I, I'm not, <laughs> not at all. Uh, Christian go to church, so yeah, I'm, I'm not into that new agey meditation type thing. Although you know, prayer can be considered a form of med meditation, absolutely. But so. What was interesting about the guided meditation is that part of it was you are not what the media says you are. <laughs> it's like essentially what she says is you are not who the media says you are. You know who your real self is. <laughs> and I'm like, you have to have a guided meditation to get you through the media criticism. Oh, get off your, oh my gosh. And they were clearly in New York when that happened. So I'm like, is this when they were? Dis it was discovered that they were carrying around mic, pa mic packs, and people went nuts about that. Is that what that was about? It was just so. It was just so silly. It was just they looked so dumb, and that she was crying over it. You're not what the media says you are. I know. I know. I mean, it's just like get off. Get off yourself. It's just this idea. I again, it goes to the back back to this idea that she is perfect in her mind. She is perfect. She's never done anything wrong. And the rest of the world just doesn't understand her. And so that they don't like grovel at her feet, I think just is totally difficult for her. And so that just crying ridiculousness with a guided, med I mean, it's just a meditation. It's just a meditation. It's so silly. Um, Lady Jane says, uh, be work you do for Royals is more important than Harry and Meghan. Oh, thank you. The work you do for Royals is more important than Harry and Meghan. I appreciate that on your face. Uh, Emmy says, chocolate on your face. Yes, I noticed, unfortunately. I usually try to, um, I was a bit rushed getting my my hot chocolate ready today. I'm so excited though, because, well, I'm not excited. I'm just sad um, because uh, I'm out of my Winter's hot chocolate. That's sad day. And they don't have the cinnamon one anymore, which is so, so sad to me because I love the cinnamon. The cinnamon one is really good. It's really, really good. Okay. Debbie, uh, Daniel uh, Photography asks, why do they follow what the media says? It would make anyone crazy to do that. It would. It would. And like for me, if I see a comment that I think could be really, really rude or mean or whatever, I try not to read it the best I can because it just doesn't help me anything to do so because sometimes people because they need to like attack you for whatever reason, they they say baseless things, mean things that are just not true and are just designed to try to tear you down. So the best thing is to just ignore it. And that's what Harry and Meghan should have done. I mean, there was this moment where they were talking about all the, t the headline titles that Meghan got and that Catherine didn't get. And, you know, it's like the avocado thing. And then the the touching the bump you could tell they obsess over it they obsess over it they know the titles of the headlines they know what they're talking about it's like you guys don't need to focus on it that much perhaps the avocado thing was you know a little bit much you know Catherine used it you know megan apparently liked avocados too and it turned into this other thing but when it came to the bump touching it's like megan clutched her belly constantly it was weird. It was really, really weird. It was constant. It was two handed. It was when there was nothing there, you know, she had to do this, sorry, this gesture on her stomach constantly. I was like, so you just not want people to think you're fat and pictures later or something like what is with this obsessive clutching the belly? And it started in Australia and it never ended. I mean, even her being on stage, she's two-handed grasping her belly as if she's carrying, you know, the Messiah in her stomach. And I'm like, oh my gosh, just get over yourself about this. Every woman in the world is pregnant. And Catherine touched her bump at least twice that I remember, pretty much. One of them was just to put a hand on it, you know, very gently and just as she was walking or whatever. And I think that was both times. One of them was after a service at St. Paul's and she wore that great Navy number and she was like laughing. And I think she was talking to Edward or something and she put her hand on her stomach and it was just very natural. What Megan did was not natural. <laughs> it just wasn't natural. And it was just constant. It was excessive. It was 
as if constantly going, look, look, I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. I was like, we get it. We get it. But the funny thing is she did it in a picture with someone later too, that private picture that this woman posted later. And I'm like, oh man, she so always wants people to know that she's pregnant and not fat. And I, I get it. I'm sure having your body change is hard. And obviously it, she struggled to lose the weight afterwards, uh, which, you know, I'm sure was very, very difficult on her, but it was just kind of, it's like, you know, people can figure out that you're pregnant and it's just not a huge deal. Okay. Um, Annie Anonymous asked, did Royals wear matching burgundy, blue, and cream on purpose to Catherine's Westminster service this week? As Megan said, they could never wear the same colors. Absolutely, I think. And this is the thing too. Megan said, well, we can't wear the same colors. It's like, well, that's why they coordinate. They talk to each other. They let each other know what colors they think they're going to wear. And so they don't clash. And Megan could have 100% done that. So I really felt like it was on Megan, Megan going, well, you know, I, I didn't want to upstage anyone. It's like, well, then you just need to ask. I'm sure they would have been more than happy to tell you what color Catherine was wearing, what color Camilla was wearing, what color the queen would be wearing. These, these households do communicate on these matters because these are considered big issues. They want to present a united front. They, they do not want to clash. You don't want to wear, you know, bright green like Megan did when everybody else, else is wearing classy, you know, dark red, blue, white, you know, as a bright green, you'll stand out in a bad way and you'll look just a little bit ridiculous. So I just felt like Megan just did not appreciate what the Royals were this communication thing. Cause again, she was perfect. She did not need to, uh, she didn't need to follow any of the rules, any of the guidelines, anything like that. She could just do her own thing. And it's like, well, that just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. And you just end up looking foolish. All right, uh, JGB asks, what did you think of Catherine's flawless courtesies to the king and queen? I thought that was lovely to see. It was great to see. And again, I understand that you know, it might seem weird. I'm sure Catherine does not do that in private. I think she has such a great relationship with Charles that she probably doesn't need to do that. And maybe she does. Maybe she does in certain circumstances, but it's a sign of respect. You respect the institution. You respect his role. And you just go ahead and you do it and you do it flawlessly. I mean, there are some, uh, there's a picture of, I think, Met Mara in Norway. She did a fantastic, you know, deep curtsy one time in the picture. So there are, Catherine, I don't think is perhaps the best curtsier out of everybody. There's some really, um, she doesn't ever go super low. Uh, a lot of the other worlds, even greeting each other can go super low um, in like private situations like that. Or just if you see, for example, Wilhelm Alexander and Queen Maxima going to uh, Denmark. Uh, Mary curtsied to both of them and she her curtsy was pretty deep. So Catherine doesn't do a super deep curtsy. Uh, and usually they bow their heads too and Catherine doesn't always do that. And so it was really great though, I think, to see her do that and show that, yes, this is an institution and yes, this is family, but we also do have a, a role we fill. And so I feel like that was really great of Catherine. Um, Verna asked, do another commentary video on episodes four and six. I don't want to watch them, please. I did one that, that covered a lot of it. And that one was really, I, I, I pulled out a couple of interesting things, but I'll keep doing more videos on it because I think there's, un unlike episodes one through three, which were very banal and boring, and there wasn't really much to pull out. There was just, there's just a lot more to unpack here in terms of Harry and Meghan's actions and how they were you know, gaslighting the, the gaslighting the audience, how they, they shifted around the timeline quite a bit. So I'm like, wait, that happened before that. Wait, that happened after that. So they, they were constantly, you know, messing with the timeline. So unless you were, you know, and followed Royals closely, you probably even want to pick up on that. It was really crazy. Um, so it was just kind of, it was something to just to, to watch and to imagine that again, it's, it's part of, it's part of the process of under uh, confuse part of the process of Harry and Meghan's kind of deceptiveness and all of this is confusing this timeline for people. Uh, Mima asked, did Harry ever say he felt the baby's kick? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't remember that. Uh, so Millie asked, did you see Princess Charlotte with her fingers crossed? I did not. I did not. I did see that cute little picture or video of her when she kind of looked up and the camera caught her face after 
greeting all the priests. It seems like the Cam the sorry, not the Cambridge, the Wales's kids, they're pretty serious, or at least they're just very much like aware that they are on, which is actually good because they're not like wild or anything. Is Catherine's like, okay, you're at this event. This is an important event. You behave certain ways. Like when I went into, you know, antique stores as a kid with my mom, you know, you put your hands behind your back and you hold them there because you don't want to break anything or, you know, in a store with breakable stuff, we do that too. So, uh, so you, they understand what their role is there. And I think that's really good. Catherine and William have trained them well. It's like, okay, in this particular situation, you act this particular way. Okay. Frozen Flower asks, what do you think after trashing the royal family telling fake stories, they will continue bad mouthing the royal family for the entire life to make money? I think they will continue to do that. And I think that the stories will get more outrageous and more fake because they keep having to make up more to fill the void because they don't have access anymore. Much like Omid Scobie. <laughs> so Omid Scobie is coming out with a new book about the royals called Endgame. Endgame, guys, about how the royal family is at the precipice of demise and how the world is moving forward. And I just want to go, you have not been on, like, inside any palace, I don't think, since Meghan left. You are not on the royal rota. The, you would never, ever be invited to any tour of the major royal families, even if you are so the so-called chief of uh, the chief royal editor of Yahoo. They would not give you the time of day. Uh, he does get, I think, the press releases still because he is a member of the press. But in terms of like actual access, he has none. He has, I would guess, almost absolutely no access to anything except for Harry and Meghan. Now, he may still have some sources that do chat with him, but I would say that's pretty minimal. I would imagine that most of the stuff he gets is from Harry and Meghan. Some of their few supporters, if any of those exist, which I don't think they do, and uh, he, he probably re gets things from other royal reporters to share because nobody gets him anything, which I think is well, is what should happen. They shouldn't, um, like he just, he doesn't have anything to share. So, um, but yeah, they will continue, I think, trashing the royal family. And I think they'll get more diluted and the more, because they need to do something because they they busted out their best stuff and it hasn't really helped. And then I always wonder too, I'm like, Will they, um, will Harry and Meghan, do they like want to tear down the monarchy so they can come in as king and queen? They they know that's not how that works anymore, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, Jewel T says they want, um, they want titles for the kids. Yeah, I hate the monarchy. Doesn't add up. Yeah. Well, they need titles for the kids because otherwise the kids are just your normal average Average day Hollywood kids. They may have the surname Mountbatten-Windsor, but Megan doesn't have that surname. Uh, she is not uh, Lady, you know, Megan Mountbatten-Windsor. Even if her and Harry, even legally, she doesn't have that surname. Neither does Catherine, actually. And so this is just what the reality of that situation is. And so it, it's just one of those kind of weird, weird things. It's like they so desperately seem to hate it, and yet they're so desperate to keep it. And that's what it's just really kind of annoying. <laughs> in so many ways. It's just like, well, you're it's either one or the other. You can either be all in or all out. This weird thing that they have, because I feel like even from a branding perspective, just from a marketing branding perspective, I'm like, what are you? Do you like the monarchy? Do you hate the monarchy? Are you desperate for your kids to have titles or do you not care if your kids have titles? Because we've heard all the stories and pretty much everything in between. So which one is it? And so I just think that's fascinating to consider is they need to they need to figure out what they're doing because right now their the stuff is not working. All right. Oh, Judah, thank you so much for the tip. You are so kind. All right. And Chelsea says he must have that book mistaken for his career. <laughs> yeah, I think so. He's he made one successful book, and that's because he had access to Harry and Meghan at so, like I don't, he doesn't have anything else. I'm ah. sorry. He just, I don't think he does. He has a great following of, of Sussex stands, but he, like, just give up the ghost and go like be a PR person for Harry Megan. Uh, Diane asked, do you think Megan will divorce Harry at some point? He is her cash cow. So how can she? So this is an interesting question. I always, when they first got married, I only ever gave them five years because I just didn't think they had anything in common. And 
I just didn't think she would do well in the institution because when I first saw her and she was an actress and then she's, you, you had this history of her being coy on social media. And I was like, oh, she's going to milk this. And that's bad. She wants attention. And as the, the wife of a sixth in line to the throne, as he would become when they married, she can't be that. She's, you're never going to be the center of the attention if you're not the heir. And if you're not the heir's wife, you're not going to be. And I didn't think she could, she could handle it. I don't, I didn't think she could. I think that would be a huge liability because you have to be, you, you play second fiddle. You do. And that's hard and that's not fun, but that is the reality of the situation is that you will be playing second fiddle to Catherine and William for the rest of your life. And I didn't think based on how Megan played with the media and obviously I think loved the attention, I didn't think she could do that. And I just didn't think she could be, uh, insert herself well in, into the institution. And obviously she did not. <laughs> she flamed out hard. And so at some point, I feel like they have to divorce because I don't feel like at some point, I feel like the toxicity will get to Harry. And I think he will come to resent her for not spending more time with his grandparents. I think that'll be a source of resentment in their marriage. And that will just continue to grow and fester because that is sometimes what happens is like you need to be harry missed out on the last couple of years of his grandparents life and megan was so loving to her grandmother she took care of her grandmother in the last couple of years of her life but you know harry and megan could have lived on the same property with her majesty and there were just so many more ways they could have gone about mexico that were a thousand times better than what they did and they would have gotten more out of it they just took away all their leverage by thinking that they were so huge that they did not need to bow to the institution, but thinking instead that the institution would bow to them. And the royal family was like, no, you can't have this happen half out thing. You can't take basically holidays on the Commonwealth's dime. And you either need to be all in or all out. There's, there's no in between here. Because what Harry and Meghan, I think... Harry said, which was confusing because he said he chose, there were five options on the table. He chose option number three, and then it was all in or all out. I, I don't think that, I, although I will say, I think maybe it was Tom Bauer's book is that they discussed a lot of options. But I think because they had Harry and the more they talked to him, the more they realized how dangerous it would be to give Harry and Meghan this half in, half out thing that they wanted. And that the things they wanted were things of, that they couldn't give the royal family's like oh okay okay we we hear you we understand you still want to do x but we, we really we can't do this because i don't think they could trust them not to abuse the little uh the little leg they had in the monarchy left i don't think the pals could trust them not to abuse it and not to use it to their own ends in a way that was would be detrimental to the rest of the royals and the rest of the uk because again you have to if you're a royal you have to think of the bitter, bigger picture you can't just go well my emotions tell me this it's like no 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 that's that's not how this works you you must think with your head a lot of times your emotions of course play into things but this needs to be a, a mind over over heart thing in a lot of ways because you are talking about people you're talking about taxpayer money you're talking about a lot of different things that harry and megan refuse to acknowledge because it's all about them and their family and nothing else nothing else matters but them and that and that is just sad i think um shannon allen says exactly and harry and megan will be talking about that more than writing in a book Yes, I feel like we'll get a book from Harry and Meghan and Meghan will write her memoir again because we haven't heard from them enough. <laughs> we have not heard from them enough, so they will have to talk again because we need the definitive account for the fifth time. <laughs> and and I think there was a, it was interesting, Meghan talking about how, well, they, they decided that they really needed a, Oh, what did they need? Um, sorry. Sometimes I get distracted by the, the, the thread and I'm like, wait, um, that they really, no, I can't even remember. I'm so sorry. If I came across it, I will, I will <laughs> see you again. I'm so sorry. But yeah, they just really thought they were the cast meow and all this. And the Royal family is like, no, we can't do that. We can't do that. Oh, uh, Rosa, Rosa Dovid. Thank you so much for the tip. You are so kind. And I know somebody else asked what hot chocolate I have as well. So I have, it's called Wittards. So um, 
W-H-I-T-T-A-R-D. Uh, it's from the UK and it's really good. It's really, really good. It's my favorite hot cocoa. I found it when I was in Edinburgh. Uh, I spent some time there uh, several years ago and I like got like all the hot chocolate. And so every time I go back to the UK or somebody else I know goes back to the UK, I was like, is there a Wittards there? <laughs> Yeah, my parents went to Oxford a couple of years ago and I was like, there's a Wittards right, right here. There's a Wittards right there. And they are having a sale. So I need to buy more of my hot chocolate. But they, this is the last of my cinnamon. And I'm sad because I, I saved it because I wasn't sure about it and it ended up being fabulous. It's really, really good. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, oh, Naomi, thank you so much for the tip. You are so kind. Thank you. And then uh, J, J, G, B, sorry, <laughs> as well. Um, will the ladies wear tiaras to the coronation? If so, where will Megan get one if they go? So there's a couple of different options here. Now, we've heard that Charles is going to pare it down quite a bit because I think the Queen's coronation had between six and 8,000 attendees, whereas Charles will only have 2,000. So I'm thinking that although there was this whole thing where like everybody, all like the ministers and everybody had like little had crowns that they would wear and, and all these sorts of things. I think to appeal more to a modern audience and not seem so archaic, because that's the, the, the Royal institution is, is very archaic in a lot of ways. The throne that Charles will sit on, I think is from the 1300s. Uh, I think it's from, I don't, I don't think it's Edward the Confessor. It might be though, it might be the throne of Edward the Confessor. Uh, and they have this like rock that has been used in, in the Scottish coronation for years and years that he'll sit under as well. So it's, it's the rock, this rock slab thing will be set underneath his, his throne. And so this, all this stuff will be, so they, they need to mix the modern with the archaic. And so I think we will only see, this is just my prediction is that we'll see Charles and William, um, with crowns and, Camilla wearing a crown as well, and Catherine wearing a larger or grander tiara. That's what I think we'll see. And I think we will see as well, um, perhaps little crowns on the Wales's children. So this is George, Charlotte, Louis. I think we may see little crowns on them. That could be, I could be totally wrong on that, but I, I would imagine that might be a possibility, especially if we have one, like one of the old ones from the Queen and Margaret. I think it would be lovely to see those busted out again and see those on the, the Wales's children. But I think they will be probably the only people in the tiara, maybe, maybe other working members of the family. I do not think Megan will wear a tiara. I do not think she'll have any prominent Harry and Megan will be sat in the back like they were much for the Jubilee, which I called is that they'll be set off to the side and not even behind Charles and William, but off way off to the side. I think that's even more the case now. Uh, I, I don't think there'll be a lot of people super excited to see them there. I don't think that'll be the case at all. And I, I'm, I anticipate they'll get some pretty fierce booze. I think they'll get a lot of booze and especially after, as they get out of the car and everything. But I think they'll go because, again, they have to. And they also won't go to any like diplomatic receptions, much like the funeral. So there was a weird tension kerfluffle thing when Harry and Meghan were supposedly invited to this diplomatic reception. I don't think they were because I think Omid Scobie is the one who said it. They were invited to the diplomatic reception. They'll be going tonight. And then Pals was like, yeah, they weren't supposed to get an invitation if they have one, which is a nice way of saying they're trying to invite themselves. They they can't go. And the and then the rest of the um and then they didn't end up going because they couldn't go. So again, it was just this whole thing where it's like, yeah, they don't trust them enough to have them at these events. And granted, no other working, non-working member of the royal family went to that reception. It was attended by the foreign royals, foreign dignitaries. <laughs> I think the same thing will happen with Harry and Meghan here. They will not be offered to any of these um, bigger events and they will go to basically the minimal one. Miss Pippa. She's little, she's limping along guys. She's limping along. All right, Cindy, thank you so much for the tip. And Yao Ching, thank you so much for the tip as well. You are so kind. I really, really do appreciate it. I really, really do. You are so kind. Um, I appreciate it. You guys are so sweet. It's been so exciting because I, I mentioned in my last video, I was like, I want to get to like 100,000 subscribers. Wouldn't that be awesome? And then I felt like there were so many more people who decided to subscribe than I initially anticipated. I was like, oh, maybe maybe it was just the video. <laughs> but I was like, oh, people are subscribing. Yay. 
because I thought that'd be awesome to hit before the end of the year. But I do appreciate, especially all of you guys. I watched one of my older videos. Any of you all who watched some of my early videos, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, because I watched my video about the Jubilee. I didn't make the video fit the frame. So there was like space in between and it, it was just like, ugh. I was like, oh, there, it was bad. So guys, thank you again so much because oh. <laughs> the imp and I said, you know, too much. And oh, it was, God, it was just bad. Okay. Susan asks, it, it is ironic that Harry is upset about being the spare, but none of her majesty's Harry and Meghan's companies are named after Lilibeth. Yes, that is. That is strange. Yeah. And I still don't understand why they named it Archwell. It's just, it's a terrible name. I think Megan, besides Sussex Royal, although it's a bit chintzy, she's really terrible at naming things. The Tig. Like, what is that supposed to mean? Like, only if you're a wine aficionado would you maybe, maybe even figure that out. And not to mention the fact, who goes around going, well, this is a Tig moment. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure she was maybe trying to make like, you know, she's trying to make fetch happen. And it was just like, it was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> so it was just super, super odd. And yeah, I, again, naming the, the arch, it arch well, it just, again, just doesn't make a ton of sense. I don't think. So Lizzie asks, but where was Doria, uh, Doria for 10 years? Are the rumors true? I, again, Megan's childhood is is strange because I feel like we don't get ever a definitive answer on things. And I am of the opinion that it does seem like Dor Doria was gone for a good chunk of Megan's childhood and that she was raised mostly by her dad in a lot of instances. And um, I'm also of the opinion that I, I'm not, I know some people are like, oh, Doria, she's so great. You know, she was so regal at the wedding and everything. I have never been on the Doria bandwagon. I am not impressed. And she, to me, I, I just wonder about her and Harry. Sorry, not her and Harry. I just, to me, she just, there's just something about her that I just don't totally trust, if that makes sense. And it's just one of those things where I'm like, eh, I don't know if I really totally I feel like the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. So if Megan is the way she is, I I think Doria is the way. I think Doria is perhaps part of the issue too. And that's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. Take it for what it is. <laughs> Take it for what it is. And um, I I do think there's, because it was weird too, because they mentioned, well, Megan was, you know, raised in with Doria in a black neighborhood. She had all these, you know, you know, she said she was raised in a black neighborhood, yet there's a picture of Megan with other children and they're all white. <laughs> so what is it, guys? Which is it? Was she raised in a black neighborhood, a white neighborhood, a mixed neighborhood? I don't care, but I think it's the inconsistencies in the messaging where I'm like, okay, just be truthful. Like if you were raised upper class, who cares? I don't. I don't, you, you may, you did well for yourself. You went to a private school for Pete's sake. We all know that you, in a lot of ways, were very successful. And so it's like this, this notion that she was trying to portray herself as, you know, the Sizzler. I had to go to the Sizzler salad bar and oh, the indignity. I went, I had to go to the old spaghetti factory. Guys, the old spaghetti factory is expensive. It's, it's a pricey to go to the old spaghetti factory. When she was like the old spaghetti factory, I was like, I remember like going to the old spaghetti factory for me growing up. That was a treat. That was a treat to go to the old spaghetti factory. They also had these like these um, you could get like um, glasses to take home if you ordered the Italian soda. I don't know if that's still a thing or not. Uh, that was a long time ago, <laughs> but it was something that like I went to and that it was it was it was it was fun and it was it was definitely not cheap. And so her constantly changing her childhood, I feel like just does does her no favors, especially with me. Because I was like, some of the things I know, especially when it came to the old spaghetti factory, I was like, have you ever been there? Because <laughs> it ain't cheap. And if that's your definition of cheap, then your definition of regular is Nobu, which is a, kind of a famous um, Hollywood place. So Tiff, oh, thank you so much for the tip, Tiff, Tiff, Tiff. Uh, and let me go see. And I had poetry chick here. 
um, I, I thought about doing like a master's in writing once, creative writing. And because, you know, I'd love to write a, like a, a nonfiction and maybe even a fiction book at some point. And I was like, part of the classes I saw in one program were poetry. And I was like, oh, I'm not good at poetry. So, um, but, so I admire people who are, because that is not my gift. Um, you said, do you have any updates on another t-shirt order and maybe news design? So, yes. So I decided, um, cause I will be out of town a bit during the last little bit of what you call it. Of, of Christmas and stuff that I'm just going to wait until next year and do an order. So I have uh, an order to put together. I'm going to do the dark Navy and, but I am going to order one of like different colors. So just to see, cause I don't want to order like a whole, th cause I really want the red, but I, it looks like a darker red on the website and I don't want to order the red and it come out bright red and not the color I wanted. So I feel better. Although I will say the color I ordered for the dark Navy turned out to be like exactly what I was thinking. Um, so I, I don't really have questions about it, but I think I will go ahead and do it that way. I've investigated and I will do more of it. I think of services that allow you to print on demand. But the problem is I saw some of those, at least one, I think it was printer Fi or something that I just wasn't that impressed with or at least from the reviews of some of the quality people said, and some of the things I didn't find the colors I wanted. And some of them don't print, um, print in like Europe and it would take a while for it to get other places. And I'm like, eh, I don't want to do that. Um, and there may be a system where I can actually send all my orders to another place and they do all the fulfillment for me. Um, that would cut a, a bit of the top. That's, that's too much information. But anyways, so the, just to say, I will be doing them at the, end of uh, the beginning of next year, because that just seems to be um, just so I can make sure I can fulfill things in a appropriate amount of time. And hopefully I'll be able to open it internationally because I do really want to do that. In addition, I have a t-shirt that I did design that I'm super excited about um, that it's um, that quote, uh, well-behaved women seldom make history. And then around it is um, the different names of like royal women in history who have like made the history books. So I'm super stoked about that. Maybe I'm the only one who wants that, but I will happily buy that for myself. <laughs> and so it's just, it's just kind of, um, but yeah, there'll be more. And I was kind of thinking too, of putting that, um, recollections may vary on different styles of t-shirts too, in addition to the different colors. And I have, do have the crown always wins. I have that t-shirt that I did design and I'll come up with a couple more. And I know some people have requested like mugs and those sorts of things. So I'll look and make sure, cause I want to have something where it's, it does start small, but I do like, even though there's print on demand and that's probably the route I should go. I do like that. I know the quality of what I'm getting. I know that it is being packaged right and I know it's getting to people appropriately and not relying on somebody else and that maybe there's a problem, which does cause more work for me. But I just want to make sure people get the best things because um, that's that's really important. Oh, um, Megan's mole. Oh, thank you. Great to hear from you again. Uh, Megan talked about living off Sizzler salad bars, but she knew about medieval times dinner and restaurant tournaments. Those were expensive to attend. She needs to pick a struggle and stick with it. That's a great point. I didn't even think about that because she's talking about the Excalibur hotel and tour tournament thing in Las Vegas, I think, is one of the places you can do that or Renaissance fairs or they do have those in a couple other places around the country. They're not in a ton of places, but they do exist and they are expensive. You're talking about a meal that costs like 30 bucks, at least if not 30, 40, 50 per person. So because you get a dinner and a show. So it's like, she just never picks a struggle with this. And it's like, what's wrong with being made, raised in the upper middle class? There's, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, you know, I would say I was raised a little bit like that, although I didn't know, at least when I was younger, I was definitely middle class because my, my elementary school is kind of funny. It, it backed up to one middle class neighborhood. And then the other half backed up to this upper middle class, um, like wealthy neighborhood. And so we went on these crazy, um, crazy like field trips, like, you know, like actually on a plane for a field trip for one day. And it was just absolutely crazy. Uh, I was so blessed, but my parents definitely could not have done all that for me. Cause we still went out at that point until my dad got a different job. And we always went to a restaurant and had water. We couldn't have soda. So, uh, I just, it's like, you know, what's wrong with that? It is what it is. And 
you know, be proud of what you came from and that, hey, Megan's made it to the royal family. I mean, even upper middle class, hey, you made it to the royals? Just be proud. Got to think of the Middletons. They did the same thing. They went up classes and bravo. That's great. Oh, be level baby. Merry Christmas, Brittany. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for all you do to keep us informed. I thank you guys all for watching. I really do appreciate it. That's been just such the fun thing about this is actually seeing it grow um, is was really a blessing because I've said this before that I I started this in part to prove something wrong. I had something, you know, kind of professionally that didn't go really well. And it was just very much a disappointing thing. And um you know, part of it I felt like was, you know, somebody said, well, you know, maybe you should learn more how to do, you know, title things and those sorts of things. And I'm like, but I think I do know how to title things. So I, I just wanted to, I think, and some of it's not, you know, a great pride thing or whatever, but I wanted to prove them wrong and prove that I could do this. And this has been so fun and it's something I love to do. And I can't wait to go to the coronation and just, thinking about going to Europe maybe next summer or fall and just getting a whole bunch of content, going to different palaces, getting pictures of different tiaras so I can talk about them and everything. And having this collection and archive of pictures I can pull from is something I'm really, really looking forward to. Oh, just Jane, thank you so much for the super sticker. And wave. Hi, Megan's mole. Hi. Okay. And then we get back here to, I am never wrong. I feel like that's Megan's model. I'm never wrong. <laughs> totally agree with you about Doria. She looked super uncomfortable at the wedding. You could tell she wasn't into it. Now she's worth 9 million. Totally nuts. Yes. I think that's totally sus. I said totally suspect. I see now. I see now. Okay. Um, yeah, I totally agree. I just never, thank you so much for the tip as well, but yeah, I've, I think she was always in this for the money, much like Thomas did, but they, they went about it in different ways. I think they were both after the money. Thomas saw a paparazzi person. He's like, and he was contacted by a paparazzi person and he was like, okay, yeah, you know, I probably need money to do this trip and stuff. Cause we've never been given any information that Thomas had a fitting for a tuxedo by Harry and Meghan for the wedding and stuff. He was never visited by any members of their staff. Like there's a lot of things about the Thomas situation that, should have happened and did not on Harry and Meghan's part. And I think Doria went after it a different way. She's like, well, I'll get super close to Meghan and I can mooch off that because why else would she? In another situation, Doria would never have gotten an invitation to Oprah Winfrey's house. Never, never. So she benefited a lot, a lot. So I think that's a great, um, I, I think I just am not a fan of Doria. I think Doria and Thomas can both be shady in their different ways, just as May Megan is shady in her way. So I think that's just that's just my personal opinion on the matter. Oh, Catherine Gillen, thank you so much. Yes, a book, please. Yes, I would love to write a book. I just don't have time yet. But that's something definitely I want to do. Um, I've thought about going back to school too, which would help um, with that a bit. Just getting back into the to the. Um, the consistency of writing, especially from, you know, both an academic perspective and different ways. And um, I've grown a lot about the writing. So that's, that's really fun. <laughs> um, will Megan be on that t-shirt? Uh, Lopi says, um, that's a great question. No. So it's, uh, if you're talking about um, the uh, well-behaved women, Zelda make history, no, she won't be on that. That'll be mostly historical women with the, I don't even think I put Queen E2 on there. So it's just mostly, I think the latest or earliest, I'm sorry, latest, I think, woman I put on there was Queen Victoria. Because um, I just thought, I just love history. <laughs> it would just be so fun. Uh, it's, it's just so fun. And I think there's incredible women throughout history. And I would be really excited about that. Um, T-shirt for your trip. Yes. So I will also be making... Uh, so if I know I have this and I don't have it confirmed yet, cause I, I need at least one more person for a trip to the UK, a tour. And so I will be, uh, creating a special t-shirt for that, for the group going on the tour. I'm super excited about that. So we will be doing that as well. And again, I will have more t-shirts and everything coming. Just got to make sure it all works together. And I got to figure out my tax situation because it'll be strange this year. Um, but it'll be, I think, really fun. And I'm really looking forward to it. And I look forward to expanding what's offered because I love like 
novelty-ish t-shirts. I think they're fun. I have one that's, and I do have, did have one that said, well, behave women seldom make history. And I lost it. And I had to buy it ugly one because they didn't have the navy one anymore so because i bought it in boston years ago um and so but yeah it's kind of um so i'm creating it mostly for myself but i'll have like special royal news network gear that i'll make too i don't know if i'll make all of that available because i want some that is like for me traveling so i have like a rain jacket and a, and more winter jacket that always has my logo on it especially as i'm covering things um, cause I'm trying to do like the whole journalist thing, which is fun. Uh, so Nancy says, thank you so much for the super sticker. You are so kind. Um, and Asma asked, why is Tyler Perry's Lilibet's godfather? No idea. <laughs> uh, cause he didn't even want to go to the UK to christen her. If that was a thing, he's like, I don't want to do that. I'm like, okay. Cause you know, they were so awful to Megan and Diana, his whole reference for how they treated Megan was Diana. I'm like, yeah, you know, she died like years ago. Right. 25 years ago that the the way they treat royals now and the paparazzi is not the same. Um, Lori asked, how much does a trip cost? So it is 3000 if I remember correctly. And it is going to be a, uh, we're going to go to the stay in London and the Cotswolds. And so our hotel is right across from the Tower of London, or sorry, not the Tower of London, the British Museum. So we'll go there and that is free. And then the first day we go stop by Westminster Abbey and Buckingham Palace. And then the day after that, we'll do a tour and go to uh, the Tower of London, St. Paul's and Kensington Palace. And then we'll go to the Cotswolds after that, which is a really cute English countryside area. So that's, I'm really looking forward to. And we'll wrap up here in a minute because we're almost at an hour and a half and um, I need to battle the the mobs at the mall here in a bit. Uh, CJ asked, what was all that whining about small Nottingham Cottage was? Yeah, that was a little bit ludicrous, especially thinking that the future king of England, who is 6'3", he's a good inch taller than Harry, also lived there for a, a couple years. Him and, and Catherine's taller than Meghan. So Catherine and William, who are both tall people, lived there with much less complaining. I never heard them complain about that place. And of course, eventually... And they knew it was temporary, just like Harry and Meghan should have known that, hey, this is temporary, um, that at some point, hey, we're going to go to we're going to go to the um, that we are going to move into a bigger place. And obviously they got Kensington Palace. They had Amner Hall. So they knew they had different options. So Harry and Meghan's complaints, I felt like rang really, really hollow. Uh, so Vicky asked, so if they get Harry back, who do the kids go with? Uh, the kids will probably stay with Megan in the States. I think that is, that is probably, that's probably what will happen. And, um, as I says, I live in London, so can we meet up? Yeah, I think that would be fun. I'll be in London a couple of times next year and hopefully maybe even a pre-trip before the coronation. Maybe I can investigate a couple of people to meet with, but, and get some coverage of like St. Paul's and stuff. Cause last time I missed my appointment at St. Paul's and Westminster. Cause my flight was delayed by 24 hours, which was awful. And, um, so we'll just go ahead and wrap up back here in a second, but I know some of you guys have watched or sorry, have asked and, um, hold on, uh, and I will go grab Pippa here in a second, but I did see Lizzie. Oh, thank you so much for the tip. He said, I study tourism and I love to travel. I would totally love to be your assistant on Castle and Tiara's UK trip. We can start a Hever Castle. Can I send you my resume? That would be great. Cause I did have to go with a, a company that, um, they kind of have trips already scheduled. So you kind of go on that and you can amend it. So like for the second day in the UK, they had us going to like like the East side and like, you know, touring like uh, a Jewish center and stuff. And not that those things aren't good or interesting, but I was like, but I'd much rather see tiaras and like big diamonds and go to castles and stuff. Cause this is a Royal channel and we should go to Royal things. Um, and so and that's why I kind of had them scrap that next day and we could go to those things. So, but if I could actually have a thing that is it is like tailored, that would be cool too. And so my email address is just editor at Royal News Network dot com. So that is, that is, um, hopefully simple, simple to remember. Um, let me, I should put it in just in the chat box here Poor at, but I work on this little antique end table that I have. And so I just, I have part of my eggs and still my hot chocolate on here and I don't want to tip anything over. Um, and so, and as well, um, thank you so much, Cece, for the tip. Can you imagine Doria obnoxiously laying on the horn 
at the less competent driver in the packed um, lot bottlenecking to the exit. Queen had to wait. <laughs> well, I don't want to say, uh, you know, I, I understand that sometimes people say mean things to other people, but, you know, it's just difficult to, um, but yeah, sometimes there are tensions in a parking lot. I will totally admit that. When I was trying to leave the Invictus Games, there were a whole lot of tensions. It took us a good half an hour, hour to get out of the Invictus Games parking lot in Walt Disney. And Walt Disney is epically known for its great system of moving vehicles and people and stuff. And so, but before we go, let me go see if I can grab little Miss Pippa. Hold on. Miss Pippa. All right, here she is. Here's Miss Pippa, everyone. If you haven't seen her in a little bit, she's like, oh, there's eggs up here. <laughs> so she is doing well. She has chickens on her cast, roosters. Um, so she gets another one. She may get a, another hard one on Monday or a soft one, hopefully. So she's doing good, and she uses her little, her little bum leg more when she runs, which is super cute. <laughs> So, uh, but yeah, she's doing so well. So thank you guys all for so much for all your well wishes and everything. She seems to be feeling much better overall. She is a little doll face and she is so cute. <laughs> and, but she is very upset that she can no longer sleep on the big girl bed. That is her, that is her sadness right now is that she can no longer sleep on the bed with me. Um, and she has to sleep in a little kennel. So she's, that's not, that's not her favorite thing, but she is very, very cute. And so anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching and go ahead and wrap this up. And I hope, wish you guys the best. We'll obviously not be doing this next week as it is Christmas Eve. Uh, and I hope you guys have a wonderful time with your families. I do, will do something on the, uh, the Christmas at Sandringham. I'm really excited to see that. I was a bit bummed we didn't get a Christmas. Um, they usually have a Christmas brunch this year where all the royals attend. We haven't seen the, that yet. Usually like a week before Christmas. So maybe we'll see it later. But guys, I hope you have a wonderful holiday season. And we'll be back probably the week after maybe. But definitely not next week. I just want you. I mean, I know not everybody celebrates Christmas. But I do. <laughs> So, and I'm sure a lot of you guys do as well. So I hope you really, really enjoyed the holiday season and have a wonderful day. I'll look forward to seeing you guys again really, really soon. Bye.